Hello, good afternoon. Today, I would like to finish up uh, my lecture series uh, on cause of product development, being our last uh, chapter titling Patents and Intellectual Property, Chapter 12. So, this is uh, to finish up the syllabus uh, of uh, 12 uh, chapters in product development course. <clears throat> Okay, in this chapter, uh, basically it discusses uh, about uh, what it takes uh, to create patents and how to uh, file your intellectual property. And those are very much uh, related to uh, intellectual uh, property topics that are very much relevant in uh, current uh, modern days. Current modern days uh, in this uh, legal issue of technology and patents uh, and this development is actually uh, must be aware of by uh, many technology uh, management students including product development uh, course students. So I think uh, current uh, legal issues pertaining uh, on technology and patent which is hot uh, in the news uh, right now is pertaining to the battle uh, trade between the United States and China. So since uh, the past <clears throat> one or two years ago, so the uh, friction between uh, two nations in trade has been uh, very uh, uh, dramatic and uh, heated debate in many news. So I would like to cover uh, this scenario in terms of uh, technology and patent issue as far as related to international trade. So this battle started uh, when the United States imposed a trade uh, tariff to China export the product to the mainland uh, America. So when uh, the trade uh, tariff uh, begins, so it is followed by another episode in which that uh, Google uh, banned their, some of their software product, like uh, partly uh, those uh, based on Android platform, and also uh, those apps in Google Play can no longer be assessed by uh, Huawei uh, smartphone users. So their major concern on this technology pattern and intellectual property issues actually uh, deepen with the growing dominance of 5G inf infrastructure, network and communication technology control or develop or pioneered by China actually. So Huawei being the uh, one of the biggest telecommunication company from China has been setting up the standard and international protocol for 5G communication. So by then, is it really national security issue for the, the US? From the US perspective, it is. it was seen as a kind of uh, technology uh, race between China and United States. And if China managed to uh, <clears throat> install their 5G structure and standard in many parts of the world, China perhaps becomes the technological protocol controller for this 5G infrastructure. As such, the United States uh, will feel uh, insecure due to this uh, lagging behind 5G infrastructure, uh, infrastructure development by China. So US felt their national security is being threatened. And the uh, United States uh, state government uh, blamed that China company uh, relay information or submit information to uh, Chinese government, which is primarily uh, Communist China Party. So the issue is either pattern or intellectual property has been really uh, breached as far as uh, the control is concerned that contribute to national security for many countries uh, which uses uh, Huawei infrastructure IT technology. So trade tariff is just a means of getting it uh, <clears throat> kind of a tug and war between the two countries that are having 
uh, friction as far as uh, balance trade. So this uh, trade tariff issue is not new in the global international business because in the uh, previous movement, many countries, including the uh, G, uh, G7 countries, they promote free trade between countries in the name of uh, APEC, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. It is an agreement between uh, many countries uh, in Asia, particularly in the eastern part of Asia, like uh, Russia, China, Japan, South Korea, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, include in New Zealand. They have a trade agreement with the United States, uh, this United States, Canada, and also Chile and Mexico that they're going to have a free trade, import and export of goods without any engagement of a tariff. Tariff is actually an additional tax that exporter must pay in order to uh, send their goods uh, to the exporting country. So as such, it engage, uh, it will contribute to additional cost of exporting from one country to another country. So APEC is to promote import, uh, free import and export trade business basically without tariff. So by having this uh, kind of uh, uh, bet, uh, trade battle between the United States and uh, China, so it actually defeat the purpose of agreement uh, agreed uh, previously by many countries in uh, Eastern Asia, especially, and with the continental uh, Northern America and South, Af uh, South America. So uh, the argument is that is the trade uh, tariff uh, is a legal argument, uh, whether China does uh, steal or illicitly uh, tapping technology from uh, United States or stealing pattern or intellectual property from the American company and later being copied uh, into Chinese product. So that is still uh, highly debated, this issue, whether it is uh, proven to be truly a real case or it is just merely a blame. So uh, we at the technology uh, management student, we must be aware that this kind of issue is either highly political or is it truly uh, te uh, technology and intellectual property issue uh, that has been uh, stolen from one country to another country. So in my proposition is that uh, so far the United State Court, uh, United State Court has never uh, bring a single case, a true single case of intellectual property theft by Huawei in American court. So it is so far merely a political issue. In such a way, even the United States uh, began to feel that the, this trade tariff uh, uh, tug of war has begun, uh, has been losing in the American perspective. So China has gained very much upper hand on the trade tariff uh, tug of war with the United States. And uh, even the American uh, business leader agreed that this trade tariff is very unproductive for international uh, business. So this is the current uh, legal issue on technology and patent pertaining to American uh, government and also with uh, Chinese uh, companies and Chinese government. China. So let's move on on the what is the actual issue on intellectual property? Why it is so valuable, right? Why it is being uh, closely monitored? Why it is being uh, so much uh, monitored in such a way it is an uh, important asset for many companies? Actual property is actually uh, can be seen as an intangible asset. It is something uh, in uh, in a non-physical uh, appearance. It is. It could be in the uh, digital form, or it could be in the form of document, file, procedure, process that is created by inventor uh, in order to uh, show their creation of product, process, and so on. So there are many types of uh, IP, intellectual property. It can be translated into trademarks, copyright, design, software, pattern, trade secret, formula, industrial uh, recipe, and so on. Those are considered intellectual property. 
intellectual property actually carry a very big value for many companies. And many uh, big companies, for example, those Fortune 500 firms uh, actually have the value of IP range between 45% uh, to 17, 75% of the total asset, which is uh, intellectual property in the form of patent. Copyright design is very, very much valuable by international company. For example, uh, the real value of intellectual uh, property with perspective of companies can be seen uh, like in Malaysia setting in 1996, in which during those time, our national uh, car company, Proton, uh, was seeking uh, international uh, an international partner. So they are searching for potential another foreign automobile maker to team up with uh, Proton. In those days, it is uh, quite limited choice for companies to team up with Proton, particularly the brand from Europe. So there are two brands from Europe that are potential or quite interested to seek uh, joint venture collaboration with Proton in 1996. Uh, one example is uh, one example was Mercedes Benz from the uh, Daimler Group. Another candidate is Renault of France. So during evaluation by Mercedes Benz, whether to join venture with a Proton to manufacture automobile in Asia, automobile uh, <coughs> Mercedes uh, automobile company find that Proton has a very low intellectual uh, property ownership. So. Uh, as such, uh, Mercedes-Benz reject to do joint venture with Proton because of its low level of intellectual or property ownership uh, by the patent office. So after quite a while for searching, uh, ultimately uh, Proton uh, could find one European uh, partner by the name of Renault of France to join with Proton uh, to co-produce uh, car in ASEAN market. So ultimately, in 1996, uh, they managed to produce the, the first model car in the form of Proton Tiara. And Proton Tiara, after a few years of sales, uh, didn't produce uh, significant, uh, well, significant big sales for Proton. And Proton Tiara was uh, actually not a successful, successful model in Asia, Malaysia, and uh, also uh, at uh, Proton sales performance. So it is just uh, considered uh, average or uh, low sales uh, group for uh, this uh, model uh, Tiara uh, car. So that is uh, how the valuable of intellectual property in the eyes of beholder, because the more uh, uh, the higher intellectual property that you have within your company, actually the higher value of your company in the perspective of your competitor or in the perspective of your uh, <clears throat> uh, of your comparative uh, companies in the same industry. There are a few types of intellectual property uh, that uh, <clears throat> has been discussed in the textbook. Intellectual property could be uh, translated in the form of uh, utility or pattern. For example, pattern utility for transferring data in the form of format like uh, USB, universal serial pass format. So this kind of pattern utility emphasizes on its novelty, means uh, its uniqueness, uh, usefulness in terms of its broad format as far as uh, data transfer uh, format is concerned. And it is uh, requiring formal application in order to apply Python under this uh, utility category. The other type of intellectual property uh, is in the form of design pattern. Uh, design pattern could be uh, explained in the form like uh, this shape of Coca-Cola glass bottle. So this shape is just uh, kind of uh, slightly slender uh, on the bottom and slightly bigger on the top and slightly uh, bigger uh, on the base is actually a uh, patented design by Coca-Cola. So this, the design is very uh, uh, significant to Coca-Cola in, in the form of uh, ornamental design category. 
So next intellectual property category, and the third one is a plant pattern. You know that plant can be genetically patented uh, because uh, during uh, these modern days, uh, many plants uh, are genetically engineered in the form of its uh, final product, in the form of its color, in the form of uh, its uh, production output, in the form of uh, like this grape. So could be uh, genetically engineered without seed. It becomes seedless uh, grapes and it is a patented uh, type of plants. So this is under category new composition of the pattern or new composition of species of plants. Intellectual property uh, can also be translated into trademarks. So it is a mark for doing trade. For example, this uh, Nike shoes uh, trademark is distinctively belong to uh, Nike Shoes Corporation. So this trademark in the category of word or symbol belong to very specific uh, product uh, belonging to specific uh, companies. And this must uh, be registered uh, by the company in order to use this symbol. The uh, fifth type of intellectual property is, uh, is categorized under copyright. Copyright uh, uh, normally in the form of uh, like books, uh, digital media, music, those are considered original expression of works in the form of copyright. So this kind of copyright uh, also need to be registered. And last but not least, among, uh, among the uh, last uh, category of intellectual property is trade secret. Trade secret is considered a proprietary and that information is useful and it may not uh, be uh, needed to register. Trade secret uh, in the form of formulation for particular food, uh, formulation of particular drinks, a particular uh, kind of recipe, those are considered confidential for the companies and you can file it under, uh, under trade secret and it is uh, proprietary and very well valuable. Those are six types of intellectual property that has been described in the book. So <clears throat> specifically, let's take a look on each of them in the form. First one, trademark. Trademark is basically the name translates as mark for doing trade. So normally uh, many product in this uh, modern industrial age, they mark uh, their product with a particular symbol, acronym, shape, or uh, certain entity to uh, state the mark of its uh, product. For example, uh, IBM uh, is uh, uh, traded mark with uh, character I, B, and M. It stands for International Business Machines. And IBM also produced many uh, or variety of various uh, models uh, in their notebook, in their computers, and one of their uh, <coughs> trademark, uh, basically, or product mark is called ThinkPad. So this is the house mark uh, under IBM, the, and its sub house mark name as product mark, they uh, label it as ThinkPad. And normally, uh, this um, kind of mark is uh, is actually registered and it is the right value to be used for commercial purposes. So it need, uh, it requires registration federally, especially like in the United States, and it can be uh, put the symbol R uh, partly on uh, uh, meaning uh, registered, uh, registered under certain particular government. TM is a trademark, so basically it is uh, the mark uh, for doing trade for certain uh, symbol or acronym or model. So <clears throat> trademark is basically uh, depend on its nature. It could be generic or it could be descriptive. It could be arbitrary or it's just a fan uh, fanciful idea. For example, uh, like uh, iPad. Uh, iPad uh, actually is just a kind of um, uh, fanciful words. It is I, uh, pad. If in the common word, uh, it may mean this uh, differently, but uh, in the perspective of, of Apple Computer Corporation, iPad represent a 
uh, tablet device, a type of computer which has a bigger panel for user to uh, put uh, mark their input. So trademark is a very significant for maintaining the traceability of the product in the market that is belonging to a particular organization and company. Trademark in uh, the textbook uh, discussed in the form of uh, Java jacket. So Java jacket is uh, basically an uh, insulator layer uh, uh, for hot drinks. So it is uh, insulating the heat of the hot uh, drinks uh, from the uh, user's hand. So that's why they, they call it Java jacket. Java is a co coffee. It is a jacket, which is this layer. So for customer to enjoy hot coffee, normally uh, they want to hold the cup by uh, at this part so that their hand won't get burned. So that is another trademark by the name of Java Jacket. This uh, product uh, like Java Jacket or uh, other insulated uh, kind of uh, cup holder was actually originated in the uh, hot coffee law, uh, lawsuit in the United States in 1994. So this uh, back, uh, <clears throat> This bad incident uh, happened at uh, McDonald uh, drive uh, through uh, fast restaurant in which one customer is an old lady by the name of Stella Liebeck. So she drove a car and she decided to drive in, driving her car uh, to buy hot coffee drinks. But during that time, this kind of uh, hot coffee drinks it doesn't have this insulation layer, neither it doesn't have the capping to avoid from uh, flipping over and splashing the hot drink to customer. So it happened to be that uh, she accidentally spilled hot coffee uh, into her lap or into her upper leg part and it caused severe burn uh, on, uh, on her upper leg parts. So Stella Layback get a legal counsel and uh, it was advised that she sued McDonald uh, management for negligence in order to design a product to be suited uh, safely to use by customer. So Layback was um, uh, injured and hospitalized for, hospitalized for uh, one more, uh, one week and she needs uh, to undergo skin grafting. So during the legal uh, battle between Stella Liebeck and McDonald, ultimately the US court awarded a uh, winning case uh, to Stella and uh, Liebeck uh, received compensation uh, as much as 640,000 US dollar in those days. So this is another significant incident or accident that happened that requires a product to be safe or to be used by customer uh, with a reasonable protection or with a reasonable uh, good design in order uh, to protect customer and at the same time also to protect the manufacturer or producer or the company. So ultimately, so McDonald or fast food uh, hot drink beca uh, ca um, uh, are becoming uh, cup like this. So the uh, cup has its notification, uh, co quotient hot, and the material uh, is made of uh, insulator type so that the hotness is not directly felt by customer and it has the capping. And the cap also got uh, some opening for a customer to drink. So this kind of design product is uh, relatively safe for customer to handle. If it flips, uh, perhaps uh, it is hardly to spill uh, much uh, hot coffee instead of without a cap. So product offered to customer also evolutionized and tested as it being it is being experienced by customer as the time as the time passes. So the second category of uh, intellectual property is named as copyright. So the name says to itself, it is the right to copy. So if it is copyrighted, so users 
uh, third party need to uh, need to earn the right or get the right from the uh, producer inventor in order uh, for them to copy right so basically in Malaysian University you can see that many books can be easily photocopied because there is a copyright law but it is uh, not fully enforced however in the advanced country like in the United States UK uh, this copyright law is strictly uh, monitored and followed. So you cannot bring a book and ask a photocopy, a photocopy a shop or photocopy uh, to copy the book for you. So they won't allow it or they will not do it because everybody follow uh, the same law and they strictly follow the uh, rules and guidelines and respecting the copyright of the author or the producer of the material. Copyright can be in the form of music, uh, software. Uh, it is one way to protect the expression and uh, the expression of the inventor. So uh, default copyright ownership owned uh, by author, right? Or by the employee of a, a company that he or she is working or through contractor agreement. Open, open source, uh, open source um, uh, media, for example, open source software, open source programming code, uh, they are available for sharing in order to build up a bigger uh, software, in order to build up a bigger, uh, for example, programming uh, codes. So this considered open source. Open source means it is free. It is not copyrighted. So it is open for many developers uh, freely for them to uh, share and for them to build up upon existing building uh, programming codes. Right. So the format of copyright is quite well flexible. Uh, it could be in the form of copyright C, uh, 2010, Google, or right reserve. Or it could be merely just C within the circle, years, and the company that is copywriting the media or the material. So this is uh, known as copyrighted material in which it is not simply free uh, to be copied or duplicated for distribution, especially for commercial purposes. The third type of uh, intellectual property is uh, known as trade secret. Uh, trade secret, it could be like this formulation of the recipe to produce a Coca-Cola drink. And this is, uh, of course, already becoming public domain because it has been more than 20 years so uh, public can easily assess the recipe of uh, coca-cola nowadays in order to produce another brand of coca-cola with uh, additional features trade secret is actually confidential information that is used for uh, business competitive advantage you know the company uh, creating the recipe and the formulation so that they can avoid direct competition by any uh, copycat uh, company so trade secret actually prevents but it does not uh, totally block others from developing similar product at least it may uh, be able to present the right of the first or the pioneering producer of uh, that secret recipe and formulation for the sake of uh, the company. Protection uh, actually provided by either country, the government, or either by the state government. So, <coughs> and it can uh, last as long as uh, 20 years. So, it must be actively worked to protect uh, the trade secret by the company by having this kind of uh, uh, non-disclosure agreement. It's like a, a documentation of a, a memorandum of understanding or agreement in order to uh, uh, share or release the information of trade secret to other company. So they must have this uh, confidential markings or chop or stamping. And, com and an employee need to be educated to protect their uh, company trade secret because that is the asset uh, to the company from the competing uh, competitor or just uh, from the copycats company. Top secret like Coca-Cola. So basically the recipe uh, contains carbonated water, sugar, caramel, code E150D, uh, 
some phosphoric acid, caffeine flavorings, and uh, also natural flavoring. So this recipe of Coca-Cola has become public, and uh, you can uh, have the actual recipe in terms of content uh, in United States Patent Office. Patent. So the third category of intellectual property is patent. <coughs> patent is uh, normally known as a limited time monopoly granted by government in exchange for teaching the public new and useful product. Usually patent carries the time range of 20 years from the time it is being filed. So patent is another way to protect inventor uh, or the owner of the invention uh, so that it may uh, limit others from copying the same product uh, bearing different uh, names or different trademark. So patent is uh, highly regarded as a big asset for a company. As, as I told you that uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, already made some assessment on Proton uh, that it has very low patent content or ownership and decided that Mercedes-Benz uh, didn't want to cooperate with a Proton due to its uh, low patent uh, ownership and it is considered uh, non, uh, it's not good to collaborate with Proton because of its uh, patent issue. So requirement to obtain a patent, a patent uh, in order to patent or not to patent, it is, uh, sub, uh, it is a very subjective matter. So it is you uh, who could justify a patent office that your invention or your product is novel, useful, or not obvious, but useful. So it is uh, you to file the patent application uh, to get your patent right. What is it uh, in it in, in a patent? Patent uh, application is a very detailed document uh, stating the very detail uh, up to measurement, up to material. Uh, actually, it is a very uh, detailed documented product, uh, just like your just like your uh, secret document. In order, you need to uh, submit to your patent office in in order for them to evaluate and compare with other product. So validate it prior issuance of patent number to your newly invented product. So if you check at www.uspto.gov, so you, you will go to US Patent Office. So you can uh, check patent, trademark, IP policy, and you can see many patents uh, under United States uh, Office, uh, ranging from uh, new product uh, processes. So it is available for public to use, uh, to study, and to um, assess. If you want to really use the actual patent uh, for your process and for your new product, then you have to uh, pay some royalty to the owner of the patent. And only then it is legal for you to use uh, its data and information. So patent is actually a very high value item. It's a big asset and need to be protected uh, by the owner in order uh, to uh safeguard uh, it's from companies that are uh, looking forward to uh, copy uh, your intellectual property in malaysia uh, patent office is known as my ipo malaysia intellectual property office you can go it's, uh, to its website and can you can click uh, many patents also available patented by malaysian uh, inventors uh, at malaysia ipo particularly uh, in, in the Malaysian uh, new invented product. This is a very specific example in the textbook, uh, a pattern uh, showing uh, insulated layer for hot drink cups, right? Uh, however, the design is made from the corru corrugated board. So if you go to US Patent Office, you can check this pattern number. You can see when it was filed. Uh, it was filed in 1993 by uh, <coughs> uh, inventor named David uh, Coffin, senior, and it is used, uh, named as recyclable corrugated beverage container and holder. So it was patented in uh, Fayetteville, New York. Right, this is the address. 
right, and the date, and what are those U.S. patent documents related to this uh, Mr. David Coffin uh, coffee cup sleeve with uh, this uh, patent number 5,205,473, uh, which is uh, pointing to David Coffin coffee cup sleeve. And it shows the detail in the next slide, for example, in order to produce that uh, holder, or cup holder so uh, this is their uh, filing content it must use a corrugated tube okay corrugated tube is actually this one this part the corrugated part right so in, uh, for specific uh, part of the corrugated so it is a numbered 100 and it is later explained 100 is what and 11 is what uh, 12 is what the measurement and so on so corrugated tube use cellulosic material cellulose uh, it is uh, partly kind of like a starch material and there is a first layer unequal cross-section plane second opening and there is a fluting means fluid liner bond these, these are the very specific construct of the uh, coffee sleeve by mr david coffee so later it's explained the construction of the material with this kind of layer and liner and there is a, a marking number that belongs to each material so how it is constructed very detailed description of uh, the uh, diagram how to make that sleeve so figure 6a so this is the measurement from peak to peak what is the distance and uh, this layer 22 means what kind of layer so it is very specific kind of construct right so another pattern by uh, inventor j sorensen u.s pattern uh, 5 million so there is another construct of different uh, cup sleeve uh, instead of corrugated they use uh, perhaps uh, foam or foam bubble so the, that is another way of uh, producing uh, cup sleeve, another pattern by a different inventor. So basically, pattern and uh, business plan are related. So in order for you to make your business plan successful and inventing new product, you need to protect it in the form of patterns because uh, patterns uh, will permit you to sell your idea and your invention to other people so that if uh, other people want uh, wanting to use it they will pay royalty uh, to the inventor or to the company so obtaining a patent is uh, basically uh, a lot of work uh, a lot of process a lot of stages right so you need to know what uh, really need to be patented or what not to be patented so not all new invention are worth of applying patent so when to file right basically uh, where uh, to file also basically it uh, must go to patent office right like in the united states uh, patent uh, is uh, patenting uh, for application is uh, basically uh, fast right and cheap and invention uh, protection uh, in the first stage for one year and subsequently it must be renewed so you need to pay fees in order to have a patent protection your patent being protected uh, in future so you need to apply the subsequent renewal well it costs you money to patent your invention like uh, as far as United uh, state patent application it range from 5,000 to 15,000 to prepare the application and the US, US filing fee is uh, for another 400 up to 800 so if uh, it needs some pro, uh, pro, uh, prosecution uh, somebody breach uh, your patent then the cost is 5000 to 15000 ultimately you pay for almost 20000 for patenting your newly product so it is costly so of course uh companies are very selective uh, of their newly invented product whether to protect uh, with patent or not but most big company they protect their invention by <coughs> patent office by that i would like to 
close uh, this lecture on a pattern and intellectual property property i hope this explanation and lecture has been he uh, helpful for you uh, in your final exam and thank you for your attention on listening to my lecture thank you again